And since that day, that song stuck with me. Amen. And since that day, I've been walking in blessing. You hear it today, you begin to walk in blessing. The Lord will bless someone today. 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 Tell me now, it may be you. It may be you. It may be someone by my side. It may be you. It may be you. It may be someone by my side. The Lord will bless someone. of this king of glory the God of all blessings the God of all power we are grateful unto you for who you are we thank you because you never change we thank you because you are the Lord God that revives your people the Bible says will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice O Lord God of heaven we hear this weekend that you might revive us, that joy might come into our life and replace sorrow and replace sadness and replace sin and replace hopelessness. Oh, Lord, visit your people. Let your power fall. Let your anointing be made manifest. Lord, today, yoke shall be broken. Bounds shall be loose. The oppressed shall be set free. The sick shall be healed. And the Lord shall be glorified. Anoint this mouth of clay, O Lord, to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need a better amen. amen. I need a better amen. 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 Thank you. You may have your seat. On Friday, we had our pastor from Georgia that blessed us and pieces the scripture to us. Amen. And I was personally blessed. And yesterday, we had our pastor from Baltimore that just took us from one level to another level. And today, you are getting to the higher level. I say you are going up higher. In the name of Jesus, you had about prevailing uh, through the power of prayer. You had about Tri triumphing into your breakthrough. And today, we are going to combine the power of prayer and then the triumphant power. We combine everything together. Give me that word, combo. I can hear somebody. We are going to combolize everything together. In the name of Jesus. Uh, and so I'll be talking on total recovery. Somebody say total. When you are doing mathematics and then you are doing your additions or your multipli multiplication or subtraction or whatever you are doing, at the end of it, you say total, total. Today you are living with total package. 
I said total package, spiritual blessing, physical blessing, material blessing, psychological blessing, matrimonial blessing, blessing in your career. Everything you need, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. Total recovery after supernatural breakthrough. That then means that recovery does not come until the breakthrough is perfected. That means the recovery does not come until there is divine intervention. That means the recovery does not come until you can say, I get it. And someone today is getting it. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8, we see the case of a man that got total recovery. I'll be telling you different people. But let's begin with this man that began with the Lord, continued with the Lord, until such a time that God said, this is a man after my own heart. His name is David, 1 Samuel chapter 30. We look at it from verse 8. And David recovered all. Who is David here today? I said, who is David here today? Whatever you have lost in life, in the name of the Lord, you are recovering them. I say you are recovering them. This is the month of January, the beginning of the year. And you are beginning the year with total package of miracle in Jesus' name. And David recovered all, all, all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Of course, it wasn't just the two wives alone he rescued. He rescued his children. It wasn't just the children alone. He rescued all the servants. It wasn't just that alone. All the properties that were stolen, he got everything back. Everything the enemy has stolen from you, you are getting them back in Jesus' name. You are getting your dignity back. Your joy back, your certificate back, your promotion back. Yes, you are getting your marriage back. I say you are going up higher in Jesus' name. Come back to that first Samuel chapter 30. Looking at it from verse 1. And it came to pass. When David and his men were come to seek lag on the third day. And understand, you are coming here the third day of this revival. That the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Siglag and smitten Siglag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So... David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam and Jeshelite, the Jeshelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But, but, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Do you have a God? I said, do you have a God that you can run back to, that you can call upon, that you can rely upon, that you can depend upon, that can fight for you, that can deliver you? That God is our God. I said that God is our God. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. In the, the Lord is God. Jump to verse 8. And David inquired at the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. What is the Lord telling you today? For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without 
fail, give me the last reward. Say it again. You will recover all. All that the locust has eaten and the power of them destroyed in your life, you will recover them all in Jesus' name. Verse 16, and when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Verse 17, and David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men which rode upon camel and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Today, before you leave, something is going to happen. The Lord is going to empower you so much that the enemy will flee from you. Amen. When we talk about breakthrough, because we're looking at total recovery after supernatural breakthrough. After supernatural breakthrough. At what point does this breakthrough happen? We talk about prayer, the power of prayer. We talk about the power of the word of God. The power of the spirit of the Lord. We talk about faith in God. We talk about partnership with God. At what point does that happen? Please pay attention here. When we talk about breakthrough, the, by, the dictionary tells us that breakthrough means discovery. It means success. It means progress. It means headway. You are making headway in life. It means advancement. It means innovation. So then, as we talk about breakthrough, you know, it was a breakthrough for the world of science when they discovered the vaccine for smallpox. It was a breakthrough for the world of science when they discovered the solution to polio. It was a breakthrough when they realized that they could quarantine AIDS, HIV AIDS. And the world is working tirelessly to also find a solution to cancer. But I can tell you there is a solution already for cancer. I said there is a solution for cancer already. And where is that solution? I said, what is that solution? You know, let me quickly share this with you. There is a brother here. And, uh, you know, one of the, when we're doing monthly revival service, I didn't even know when it happened, but they were sharing this with me. And uh, at the end of the month, and then we may talk, make a call, and if God leads, I will make a call today. And then I got to him to pray for him, and uh, I began to rebuke the spirit of cancer. Unknown to me that Tuesday, two days before, Friday, he went to the doctor and they diagnosed him with cancer. And Sunday he came to church, I got to him, and I was rebuking cancer. To cut a long story short, they said his prostate, that shouldn't have been more than, I'm not a medical person, I'm just relaying what I was told. Amen. That shouldn't be, the PSA that shouldn't be more than uh, 40 was 1,040. And so they gave him two months to live. Two months to live. Eventually, according to them, I also went to their house to visit. They were telling me, I didn't even know when I went there. They said, Pastor, you forgot. I said, I went to many places. I don't remember. Maybe when I suddenly visit you, Miracle will suddenly visit you. Yeah. Healing will suddenly visit you. Yeah. Deliverance will suddenly visit you. Yeah. You know, sometimes I move and I wonder, why did I go to where I went to? Later I realize it wasn't me. It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. To cut a long story short, because it's a long story, and then I went there again, and they said, Pastor, doctor gave us two months to leave. 
Amen. The wife was seeing it. The man was there. As at that time, it was already seven months. Amen. Before then, what they said was 1,040. The chain dropped down to 40. There is power. I said there is power. There is power. Shout that name. Let me hear you. I said shout that name. Let me hear you. Total recovery. Total recovery. There is another brother here. He's also hearing as I'm talking. Years back. I just felt let me go visit him. You know, if you know me, if you get or that I come to your house without calling you, good for you. Praise the Lord. I said good for you. But whether you like it or not, I will visit. A miracle will visit you. And blessing will visit you. And I didn't tell him I was coming. And he's sitting right before me hearing me now. Praise the Lord. And he's happy and the wife is happy. Praise the Lord. The wife wasn't even our member that time. But today... The brother is a pastor. I said he's a pastor. And I saw the wife dancing earlier on here. Praise the Lord. And then I just got there to visit. It was, it was in the evening. Pastor, you came to our house? Yes, I came. Praise the Lord. And then after a few minutes, I said uh, I was good. Uh, pastor, don't go yet. Amen. My coordinator said I should see you. I've been wanting to see you. But thank God you came to my house. What you are going to look for at, I don't, where is that one? Praise the Lord. And then I said, uh, talk to me. And he said, we'll be married for this long. I don't remember how long ago. Again. And there is no child. And I said with God. You don't know your Bible. I said with God. All things are possible. And the wife was there. And I said, let us pray. And we prayed. And I let. To cut a long story short, according to their testimony, and they're hearing right now, that very month, the Lord visited them. And what happened was, what happened was, they shared the testimony themselves so I can share it with you also. Uh, they didn't tell me that the wife had issue of blood. But the first miracle was the issue of blood dried up. Amen. Your issue will dry up. Amen. I say your issue will dry up. Amen. And then the Lord visited and then the wife became pregnant. You know the word. Give me the word. Somebody here will be pregnant. Amen. Pregnant with miracle. Amen. Pregnant with blessing. In the name of Jesus. And then the child was born. And they named the child divine. Turn to somebody and say in the name of Jesus. Divine intervention is coming your way. It's coming my way. In the name of Jesus. And you know the good news? Even divine is hearing as I'm talking right now. Praise the Lord. That family with no child now has four. Has God changed? He will never change. Has God changed? My God will never change. The same yesterday. Today and forever. talking of breakthrough, you are talking about a successful penetration through a metal, a wooden brick or iron stronghold. Whatsoever has been a barrier between you and your miracle, you will successfully break through. You will penetrate them. In the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. When we talk about breakthrough, we're talking about removing obstruction. 
obstacle, hindrances, roadblock from the pathway. Understand? That the mountains of life are so heavy and sturdy that the power of man cannot move them. Only the power of God can roll them away. And the power of resurrection that rolled away the stone from the sepulchre of Jesus Christ and Christ rose up again, that power is coming to your life now in Jesus' name. When there is a roadblock, when there is an impediment, when there is an obstruction, what is the purpose? It is to prevent you from accomplishing your God-given goal. The devil will fail. The purpose of hindrances and obstacles is to make you a failure in life. The devil will fail. It is to limit you from matching up with your mates. It is to condition you to your current status. Current status. That's why I use the word turning point before. Your status will change. Yes. I say your status will change. Yes. The enemy wants to make you miserable in life. Miserable in business. Miserable financially. Make your marriage miserable. Or make you miserable in marriage. Academically miserable. You know, there are pastors that are even in this situation miserable. Mistrable, mistrable. Uh, our pastor over there was with me in Georgia many years ago when a minister came for prayer, minister with another church bound by the devil. And what happened? He went somewhere, you must have heard me say this before, and somebody else prayed for him and lay hands upon him and downloaded Python into him. The Lord will deliver you. Be careful of who is laying hands on you. Understand that is there is scripture to lay hands, but be careful who is laying hands on you. Before they land, download somebody else into you. And as we were praying for the person, this minister, he was throwing out light blood. Light blood. I am telling you, there are things going on in the world. But no matter what you came here with, you know, the pastor that ministered yesterday said, he doesn't know what has become of Deeper Light member. That instead of benefiting from the power God has given us in this church, you are running helter scatter. You are running from where there is help to where there, is, there are no help. You are running to churches where their members are running to us. They come to us privately, they come to us openly. For prayer. And you, you know, when you don't value or appreciate what you have, you will be the loser. And you are going over there, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. And we pray for that individual. If you are here today, under any kind of spell, there is enough power in the name of Jesus. To liberate, to deliver, and to set you free in Jesus' name. Three points. Number one, traveling that leads to supernatural breakthrough. It's not every traveling that leads to breakthrough. But there are some traveling when you travel in prayer, when you travel the right way, when you pray God's way, then the result will come. The result will come. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me. And find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Understand, it's not everyone that is praying that is praying with all their heart. It's not everyone that comes to church that is doing it with all their heart. Some are just playing religion. You will get the reward of religion. But if you come with righteousness, if you come with sincerity and honesty of heart, the Lord will visit you in Jesus' name. Don't you understand? Two people went to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, the other, a publican. And the publican said, Lord, I understand and I know myself. I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. The Pharisee, the religious man, he said, oh God, I'm not as bad as that individual. Who told you that? 
The Bible said the publican went home justified than the Pharisee. Don't be a Pharisee. When you come to the house of God, come with all your heart. Pour out your heart and tell the Lord, search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Lord, and know my thoughts, I pray. See, if there be any wicked way in me, if you have to weep, weep. Gone were the days when people come to the church and they hold on to the horn of the altar, pouring out their heart and life and weeping and wailing before the Lord. This time and age, people just come to sing and to dance. They don't care about that God who is a consuming fire. It says, and ye shall seek me. And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. There are times that God cannot be found. There are times that God is not near you. There are times that God will seem far away. If you are not seeking and searching in righteousness, in holiness, and in purity. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 was the case of a man who had an issue in his life. He had the major problem in, in his life. He knew what it meant to seek the Lord genuinely, sincerely, and honestly. And uh, he prayed, not a long prayer. He prayed, not even with fasting. He prayed, and he got an answer. Somebody here will get an answer. And Jabesh, first Corinth, uh, Chronicles 14. And Jabesh called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And somebody will be blessed indeed. And enlarge my coast, your coast shall be enlarged. And that thy hand might be with me. The Lord will keep you by, uh, 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 by his side in Jesus' name. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. This is a child, this is a man that was born a pain, a sorrow. This is a man that every day of his life, things were upside down. Everywhere he went, don't you know, names affect people. The name you bear has a lot to do with you. You don't have to change it, but you can change your situation if you're a child of God. Amen? And Jabez said, I don't need to change my name. Yes, I know. Abraham's name was changed. God understands why. But I can change my situation. Oh God, the God of all creation, do it for me. And God turned him around. He will turn you around. Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people traveling, that leads to supernatural breakthrough. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. When you come to prayer, how do you come? You know it all. When you come for prayer, you know the problem with many of our members is, when you say, let us pray, they understand all the language of prayer. It's not the language of prayer that matters, it's the power of prayer. Is the power of prayer. And then they just, they, they just mutter some words. And God is not in it. And then they just make some move. And God is not in it. But when you, there is, you, you are contrite at heart. You are broken in the spirit. And you pour out your heart unto the Lord. The Bible says, he that is humble. 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 And then you pray. And you seek the face of the Lord. And then you turn away from your wicked ways. The Bible says, then will God hear from heaven. And forgive their sins. And will heal their land. Pay attention here. Before your land is healed, your sins must be forgiven. Before your body is healed, your sins must be forgiven. 
Before that devil, demon is cast out of you, your sins must be forgiven. Shall we continue in saying that grace may abound? God forbid. And so, if you are praying, no matter who you go to, no matter who you cry unto, no matter how many times you fasted, if there is sin in your life, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. The answer will not come. Isaiah chapter 58. Looking at it from verse 1. You know, I read it in uh, King James Version. And then I looked at it in a new living translation. And I felt I would give it to you in a new way. Amen. New living translation. Isaiah 58. And the Bible says, shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me. 